Welcome to the Las Vegas Phil podcast brought to you by Jump Studios, where we cover topics related to everything happening around Sin City, including the social media scene, food, and a whole lot more with some of the best, most popular accounts around the city and talk about their success in Vegas and beyond. I'm your host, Philip Zhang, aka Las Vegas Phil. Check me out on IG or TikTok on with the show. All right, welcome to this week's show. Thank you to all the loyal listeners and viewers for being there. I know the schedule has been kind of inconsistent, but I've been busy. I uh, still love you, though, and we've got a super fun episode today. Uh, Jessica Wu, uh, famously known as the Bento Box Queen, exploded four years ago on TikTok, making her now famous DIY bento style lunches. Uh, while cooking brought her initial fame, she's a multi dimensional personality, and her channel reflects that uh, with inspiring and creative ideas, family fun, beauty, lifestyle content, and more. Uh, she has her first cookbook coming out on July 30th, uh, titled Let's Make Some Lunch, Recipes Made with Love for Everyone, a cookbook through DK, a division of Penguin Random House. Uh, this beautiful book can now be pre-ordered through Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, Bookshop.org, Hudson Booksellers, Target, Walmart. Uh, we're going to chat about the book and the work it took to get to this point, and we're going to cook one of her recipes from her book after, and hopefully I don't screw that up. I think, I think it'll be fine. I think it'll be fine. With over 5.7 million followers on TikTok, 762K on YouTube, 352K on IG, and 289K on Facebook. Uh, she also has another great account as well, Pack My Lunch Mom, uh, at 139K on IG. Uh, please welcome back, making her second appearance on the podcast, Jessica Wu, aka Soli Jessica. Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Congrats. Thank you. And so this is kind of crazy. This podcast pretty much only happened because we ran into each other on the plane. I was uh, I booked a red eye flight to New York City two Wednesdays ago, two months ago, and I get to my seat and this person next to me is kind of going through her bag, and all of a sudden, one a.m. she comes up. She's like, "Hi." I'm like, uh, "What are the chances to be sitting next to you on the plane to New York City?" I know, lucky you. <laughs> lucky you. I agree. I agree. Um, no, it was awesome. Um, Cause now that I'm older, I get nervous about a lot of things that I never used to get nervous about. So having a familiar face, I was like, ah, at least I'm flying with Phil, you know. Um, so that was really awesome. Even though we didn't talk or do anything with the, you know, we just kind of sat down and we talked initially, but uh, you know, we were so tired. It was overnight flight, so. And I wonder, I what, out. yeah, I was wondering kind of what the, what normal people would do. Like, if it's a red eye flight, do we just say, okay, let's stop talking? Do we just sleep or do we just sleep and just say, I yeah, don't know. I, I don't know. I think it was pretty normal. <laughs> yeah. I, I probably just fell asleep, probably <laughs> snored a little. <laughs> totally fine, totally fine. Yeah. But then uh, we, you had some free time after in New York, so we grabbed whatever it was, breakfast or lunch at a Korean spot in Koreatown. It was uh, so good. Her name is Han. That was really good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. And then you had a packed week uh, from there. Yeah. I was only in New York for 28 hours for an event. And then I wanted to also promote my book with my friends who lived in New York. So I was doing all that. But I got to spend time with Phil. I got a library card with him. <laughs> That's right. We yes. were walking. And I was like, it's so pretty. And then he was like, let's go. And I was like... Let's do it. <laughs> and so, and then I was like, look, you can get a library card. And um, we got one. Yeah. And it was awesome. The library was one of my highlights. It was so pretty, even though we were so tired. I know. We were tired. Um, but what I was most impressed with that you had a carry on, uh, because not only were you going to New York, you went to LA after that, all in the carry on. I need some lessons on unpacking. Yeah, I'm because you had these awesome dresses and great outfits, and how did it all how did it all work? How did you fit it all in? Well, they're all tiny to begin with, <laughs> okay. so most of go. my items are like this big, <laughs> um, so I can fit, fit a lot. But I also love to usually pack random stuff and figure out what I'm wearing later. This trip, I made it a little bit more intentional and was like, okay, I can't take everything, so. Just take what you're actually going to wear. So that helped. Nice. So in LA, you went to the Tom Brady roast, which I am extremely jealous of. I am a, the biggest Patriots fan I know. Um, what was that experience like? 
It was awesome. It was so fun. Um, I got there early. There was nobody else. I think I was one of the first ones to walk the carpet. It was like a football field carpet, which was really cool. Um, so I just hung out by the carpet and just like took as many pictures as I wanted because nobody came yet. And and then they were like, well, you can go sit down. But then it wasn't open yet because I was early. So I just kind of hung out. And then I saw everyone on the carpet, like literally everyone, everyone who got roasted, ro roasters. Um, and I don't really get like starstruck or anything because I worked on the strip and worked with a lot of celebrities before. But it was cool to see these kind of sports people. And I don't know, it was just different, you know? It was different, and I wanted to be a sports broadcaster at UNLV for oh, really? a second of my life. Yeah, wow. I went to school for journalism and media studies for it. But then I was like, oh, I don't want to write as much. Um, so then I kind of veered off and went towards public relations and advertising. But... Yeah, so that part was like cool because I obviously wanted to be like a sports broadcaster and talk about sports. But and Kim K was there. Yeah, and she's so hot. <laughs> they they said they edited out Netflix edited out the booing. The booing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, everyone was booing. It was so sad, and <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, how horrible. To I wonder feel. if it's Taylor Swift backlash. I just think song. football fans aren't Maybe really just... into, you know, the celebrity gossip, influencer type, or, you know, even Taylor. Like, she gets so much flack for dating True. Travis, and it's just, you know, it's just it, it how is it, is. it is. Yeah. I mean, Tom Brady, actually, the article came out yesterday saying he regrets doing the roast because uh, it hurt his kids, <clears throat> kind of. Um, what was, like, I was watching it that night, and I was, like, shocked and how over the top it was. Yeah, but. they, I mean, they went full on. I was like, yeah. you know, I was like, oh my God. Uh, you know, like the whole time I was like, oh shoot, you yeah. know, like. Super I cringe mean, it sometimes. Was, it went down, but I mean, that's how Rose should be, I think. And right. he kind of signed up for it, so. True, true. Uh, so let's get into the book. Uh, when did you start initially kind of putting it together? It's a kind. It's kind of a long story because I once I went viral and was doing the food thing, I immediately was like, I want to do a cookbook. You know, people put it in my head already. All my followers are like, When are you going to come out with a cookbook? And I was like, I'm ready. You know. And so I had all these ideas. I had this other whole whole different book concept that I had oh. and I worked on um, the proposal for it and everything and then in the middle of it was kind of when my mom passed away and then I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to film. I didn't want to write about anything. I was sad, depressed and just unmotivated. So I quit for a while to kind of just let that go because my writing was very sad. You know, it wasn't happy. It wasn't my brand. I love sharing happiness and love and you know that's kind of my whole thing and I was just like I don't want to do anything um and that book was turning into like a sad emotional kind of thing and I was like okay I can't do that even though it's like good for me to let out those emotions it's not the emotions I want to let out to the world especially my first book so then it was like a year later that's when I kind of came back to myself and started working on this one. This one's more of, you know, what I do on a daily, what I record about, what I talk about, the food that I make for my kids and what everyone loves me for. So that's where this came about and here it is. <laughs> so once you start developing the book, I mean, how does it work? Do you, do you s speak with your agent or manager first and then they start putting out feelers or how did that ball get rolling? So I was introduced to my literary agent by Joanne Milanero, the Korean vegan. She has a successful cookbook and she's amazing and she's one of my close friends. And she was like, I want you to meet someone. You know, he made my dreams come true and I don't want to share him with everyone, but I, you know, I want to share him with you. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. And I love her book. It's beautiful. And so I talked to Charlie, my agent, and he 
and he was throughout this whole process. He was there first when I was doing my emotional stuff. Um, I told him what I wanted. You know, I kind I told him my ideas, what I had in mind, and he was very supportive. He 100% understood what I wanted to put out um, in a book, in my first book. And, yeah, he was just kind of there till I was ready, and then I was ready. And then once we were ready, you have to – so first step is writing a proposal, basically a kind of like a business plan, but for a book. Um, you want to talk about what – you want in it what kind of recipes what what do you want it to look like um example recipes that you will have in the book um anything you can think of and put into a proposal you know it's kind of like i said a business plan for anything a restaurant um your you know why you're a good candidate for selling a book you know everything that entails you know a a product basically and so i wrote that. I didn't know where to start. I, I got a bunch of examples from my lit agent and was like, here. And the proposals ranged from very simple to detailed. They were kind of like around 10 pages long. Um, so did certain potential publishers want more information than others in the proposal? At the end, um, they'll just ask you questions okay. um, if they have any. Mm -hmm. um, and I met with four different publishers, and they all asked me way different things, which was kind of crazy, because each one had something different that they were asking about. Um, and yeah, so with the proposal, I actually wanted to see if I wanted to work with a writer, because I was like, I don't know if I want to write the whole cookbook, you know? Um, it, it seemed like a lot of work, you know, like because I'm raising my kids, doing the videos, and then I have to write this thing. And so I, I met with a bunch of writers. I picked one. She worked with Martha Stewart. Oh, she wow. um, wrote books. You know, she seemed like amazing. I ended up not working with her just because I felt like my voice wasn't being written um, like me, you know. And so I was like, I'll just do it. You know, I want to tell my story the way I want to. And yeah, I, I wanted to be more proud of something and, you know, come out with something that I did pretty much on my own. So yeah, proposal done. And then my lit agent goes out and pitches me and my proposal to the lit literary, um, to the publishers. And then the publishers come back and then you meet with all of them. They ask you, you know, like what, I don't know, just whatever questions they have. Right. And then, uh, and then they offer you money, basically. So they offer you... Um, uh, so like an advance? Mm -hmm. Okay. They offer you an advance, and so the, if there's more than one offers, then they go on, it goes in a bid, basically, where they fight over, you know, how much money you get for an advance. So my, um, and, but also that's your choice to make, you know, do you want more money or you want to work with the publisher that you basically want to work with? I went with the publisher that I loved right off the bat. My editor, I loved, she understood what I wanted to do. That was kind of the biggest thing for me was understanding my vision, understanding me as a content creator and my videos. I make lunch for my kids, but I also share more than that, you know? It's the love, and it's the little details. It's um, just stuff like that. And not everyone gets it, you know? Not everyone gets what I do. Like, oh, great, you know, she makes lunch for my kids. I do, too. But, you know, there's other things that come into play, and my publishers really understood that and gave me a lot of creative freedom. So I feel lucky working with them. That's awesome. And then, yeah, going back to just taking the reins and doing yourself, even though that's the harder road, the longer road, it's the right way to have it be done, right? Yeah, I mean, if you want a writer, of course I don't ever say, like, no, don't get a writer, because some people don't have that bandwidth or don't even want to write it. So that's, you know, that's on them. But for me personally, I was like, you know, I did this, I wrote it, and I can say, like, wow, you know, I'm pat on my back. <laughs> Absolutely. 272 pages of... You know, all Jessica right there. You have 150 recipes for lunch makers of all experience levels, uh, 60 lunchbox ideas. And then the cool thing about it is you're able to mix and match 
and do different meals with all the different components. Yeah, basically you can, it's a free for all. It's broken down into different chapters of breakfast for lunch, sandwich wraps and rolls, dinner leftovers, and then around the world recipes. So it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then around the world because I love international comfort food. That's my favorite. So um, you can make it into just a breakfast, just a lunch or dinner, but they're all lunchable and you can make them into a lunch. Did you have a tar- hard time narrowing down recipes or how I did. it was going to go? Um, it was hard for me because I, w- I was like, I want more. Um, at first, I was shooting at about 80, which is kind of minimum of what they want. But once I started like making the book and being like, I want this recipe, I want this recipe, I want this, it added up so quick. And I had to be like, okay, you need to stop. So it's... 160 recipes and then um, okay. 60, over 60 lunchable items, I believe. Yes, over 60, yeah. Um, but yeah. Very cool. So let's get into the details a bit. Let's talk about the amazing cover because, I mean, I saw all the behind the scenes you posted recently with uh, the stories of, of shooting this behind the scenes. Um, how did you land on a photographer? How did you land on... Like it was crazy. Layout. Was it? <laughs> the whole thing was crazy, yeah. But the photographer, I found her just on Instagram. I was just oh, looking really? up Vegas photographers. I had a few that I loved in L.A., but it was just really hard to do the commute. It was going to be two weeks long. I had to do them different weeks because my girls, you know, they need me. So I was like, I need to find someone in Vegas. I found Sierra. And I just liked her stuff, and I was like, hey, I'm writing a cookbook. You want to, you know, do this with me? And she was like, yeah. And luckily, everything worked out. She's amazing. I loved I loved everything. You know, she was so helpful with, you know, picking props and setting up everything and just helping with everything. She brought a good team to her assistant, and then she brought a food stylist to help as well. So, yeah, I'm very happy. That I found her. If you don't mind opening up the mm-hmm. book to show some of the, the pictures with you and your kids. Um, yeah, so this is the cover. Yeah. Let me talk to you about the cover. So Checker Print is kind of my brand. Um, this is all embossed, debossed, glittery, so holographic glitter. <laughs> this is um, matte cover, but these are all glossy. And we had to do like so many test prints because it wasn't it like that one's like a misprinted one. Oh, yeah, I see. Okay. Um, and then the back cover, my girls are in it, which I love. And then here's some of my lunches, spam masubi, chicken wardrobe salad. And so how long did the photo shoot? Was this multiple days? It was 12 days. 12 days of shoots. 12 days. Wow. Mm-hmm. Because you got to think 100 recipes split into each oh, day. that's right. So I don't even know. Like I had a spreadsheet of probably like... I don't know. Like, it was like 18 recipes per day, I believe. Um, and not only were they recipes, I had to make the recipes into the lunch. So after we make the food, style the food, shoot the food, then I have to go and take the food, make a lunch, then shoot the food. And then, wow. that, you know, that was how it went. But it was morning to night, all day long, everyone just helping everyone. And it and it was like I have to do my hair, my makeup, my wardrobe, and still have to make real lunch for my kids. So <laughs> it was a lot, but it was cool. I mean, the finished product's amazing. Um, I've heard for food styling, for photography, little things like brushing olive oil on our beef always makes it look good. Is there anything that you had to do or the photographer suggested for the food to make it? pop a little bit more behind the scenes or was it just straight like this was it most of it was this was just it because i'm not familiar with that stuff yeah, I'm not and either. the food stylist came and she was like i can do all these stuff but i was like i want the food to just like look like how it is i don't want to doctor up too much or make it look too fake um so most of it's just like you know style done um, but she did do a little bit like spraying on oil to make it shiny because some days were longer, sitting out longer. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, little tricks here and there. She kind of had like a melting gun for making the cheese look more gooey. But no, like, no weird painting me or yeah. using, I don't know. I, I, I always see those TikToks of like, oh, this is what it's actually, you know, and it's like motor oil instead <laughs> of syrup or, you know, so no. And I hate wasting food. So I didn't, you know, I didn't want to do all that. Uh, so now you're on the cusp of the book being released pretty soon. What is the work that's entailed with you and the publisher and the agent like leading up to the release and then post-release? What's the plan for you? So now it's just basically marketing, 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 marketing. I just have to make videos promoting the book. I'm planning a book tour with them. But basically I just have to pre-sell and it's so important because – those numbers are the ones that the retailers see. And if they want my book in a store or, you know, just and if they want to order any books, it's through those numbers. So pre-sale is really important in that way. And I just have to do that now. Sell, sell the book, sell myself, <laughs> <laughs> sell my soul. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, pre-order. Yeah, $32 retail. I think it might be on discount. Amazon kind of alludes to maybe there's going to be a discount that first week. Yeah, Amazon, yeah. Um, they do random sales. Yeah. But if you pre-sale now and if it ever goes on sale, you'll still get the sale price when it drops July 30th. So... Very cool. Yeah, you'll get the discount, at least. A couple other details that I love in the book is at the end... Uh, with the stickers oh, yeah. and the cards. I mean, that's such such a cool little touch and pretty atypical for any other book to even have something like this. Um, was Were there hurdles into incorporating things like that or were they totally down with whatever you wanted to do? Um, my publishers let me do whatever I wanted, basically. <laughs> so that was amazing. But there were uh, obviously hurdles with like, Printing, pricing, you know, because they were like, we want to give you all this, but obviously we have to keep it at a certain price point. Um, at first they were like, we can only fit like nine stickers, but I was like, please, can we have more stickers? You know, and it looks um, great this way. I mean, so yeah, yeah, there's stickers. These are all hand drawn digitally by my friend Megan also. So they're very special. They're nice. emojis. And then this part is the notes. They're yeah. peripherated, so you can actually punch them out, write your cute little note, seal it with a sticker, and then, yeah. So that part, yeah, I was like, can I please have that? And then they were like, yeah. And, yeah, and I have it. Amazing. Amazing. So how does it work with a contract with a publisher? Like, are you committed to doing XXX for the promotion for a certain amount of time? Is it a year? Is it more? Like, how does that all work? Yeah, I mean, um, I think it just depends on everyone differently. And that's where my manager comes in. So my manager and my lit agent go through the contract and discuss things that are, you know, they know my schedule. They know what I do. So they they basically just handled the contract and handle the money and, you know, doing all that. I didn't have to worry about that at all. But basically, yeah, just they talk about everything that entails, you know, selling the book, make, marketing the book. Um, when you have to finish the book, there's, you know, very, very detailed deadlines of everything. And it's giant. It's okay. a giant contract. But yeah. And then were you running up to the deadline? Were you like, I mean, short on time or was it pretty much like... Um, I want, it was my kind of own deadline because I told them I wanted to be done in a year. It usually takes about two years to complete a book and they knew I wanted to get it done as soon as possible. And I wanted to do a summer release before back to school season. And so they basically, I told them that, you know, I was like, I want to do it during this time, this is when I want to release it. And they were like, okay, well, you have to be done by this time. Like, have to, because printing takes this much time. And then editing and proofreading, you know, there's so many steps of approval. And the contract itself, you know, they're working on the contract as I'm trying to work on my book as well. So, 
yeah, so I basically just, it was, to me, it was kind of like school, like the biggest project that I've ever had to turn For in. Um, <laughs> definitely crunched, you know, a few days hard. And, you know, sometimes I wouldn't want to write anything. And sometimes I didn't want to cook anymore. And, Everything, but you know, I really wanted to have something tangible for my girls, especially you know when I'm not here, and something that my followers can have in their home. You know, they see me on screen, and you know, some of them I got get to meet, but not everyone I get to meet, so they can actually have something and a piece of me and my family in their house. And yeah, that's that's. Oh, it's here. I mean, here. It's yeah, it's, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, as fans of yours, you know, it's it's hard to have something that tangible like this, and it just makes uh, not only a great gift, but it's super useful with all the recipes. It it doesn't necessarily you don't necessarily have to have kids to cook them. No, and it's for everyone. Yeah, it's for everyone. <laughs> so cool. Uh, book tour. So ideally, if you which cities were you looking at going to, or are you looking at going to? I really want to try to go to New York, L.A., Houston, and Chicago, Vegas, of course, um, and then possibly Hawaii if I can, but we just have to see. That's also a big thing is I can go on a longer tour, bigger tour, if I do really good in pre-sale. So, you know, that's that's basically where everything stands is now I just have to pre-sell it, and th that will dictate dictate what's going to how everything's going to go now sure so charting position is initial charting position is the most important thing for a book in 2024 mm -hmm. i guess okay interesting yeah to make new york times bestseller list everything like that everything so pre-sale is where it's at all right cool uh we are uh, i'm super excited we're actually going to make your sliders yeah. uh for the episode uh, shout out to my wife Ayui for getting all the groceries this morning. Thank I was a, you. I was a little uh, hungover <laughs> this morning to <laughs> make it. Uh, we went to Poppy Steak last oh, night. Yeah. Which oh was yeah, oh yeah, a I fucking I circus. Yeah, that looks insane. Yeah, um, so much hate in the DMs. Oh really? Uh, from like, oh my god, a thousand dollar steak. What oh, are yeah. you doing? It's and Vegas. I mean, it's Vegas. It's exactly. Vegas. We do everything like that. So yeah, I actually overslept my first appointment, unfortunately. But no. sorry, Bailey. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're gonna do the sliders of caramelized onions. It's right here. They're yummy, and my girls love them. You can do without the onions, obviously, if your kids don't like them. But I added them because they're yummy. But here they are. Here's this is what it looks like inside. Yeah, I mean the layout is super clean, but like I love all the the color and it just looks great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit about the layout. It's um, like computer screens, mm -hmm. emojis, because I'm coming from the digital screen to your book. Right. I wanted to add those little details in. I also have all the notes. All the notes. Oh my god. I also have a playlist of my favorite songs, so you can cook with my music, and they have, they're all in here too, so you know what you're listening to. Very cool. Yeah. What are your all-time favorite jams? You know, I like everything, but pretty much country music. So Country? They're, yeah. Oh. Sorry. No, it's okay. I did not I like, expect I, that I as I guess the I like, I, I like Shania Twain country, Jewel. Yep. But... Mm, Cool. Not the not everything else, I guess. Right. But yeah, so I have punk music in here. I have ska music. I grew up listening to a lot of ska and punk um, uh, when I was a kid. And then I also have cutesy love songs, of course. Um, ro classic rock. I have awesome. some rap songs in there. K-pop in there. But they're mostly like, I put everything in here. Pretty much for my baby. So if it's in here, it's because I care and I want you to, you know, listen to the music and be happy and cook the food and eat and, you know, do all the things. Yep. Shout out to kids, Adeline, Maxine, and Olive for being such a big part of, yeah, of this. Babies. And uh, thankfully, your daughter did not hit me over the head with a tripod when I visited your house. So Phil we'll came over, recipes. and I was pulling up, and she, and my kids were alone for two minutes. And 
she saw she saw him by the front door and she had my camera tripod in her hand and she was like I didn't know who he was I saw the shadow and then I saw it walk away I'm like oh she must not be home she was like <laughs> I, I had this just thinking. <laughs> I know. Hey, hey, if I saw me at the door, I would get a tripod, too. Um, <laughs> so let's set up, yeah, and uh, we'll start cooking the sliders in a second. What a special surprise to have the Bento Box Queen herself cooking for us on the show. I can't believe this is actually happening. Uh, but we're going to do the sliders of caramelized onions. Uh, how often do you make these sliders at home these days? Uh, probably every other week. My girls love them. So okay. they're, they're there. And I see you do, do a lot of requests, like you made quesadillas. Is it always like? I always ask uh, what they want because I'm always like, if I'm not craving anything, I'm always like, what am I gonna make? Yeah, because I have to pretty much make something all the time. So it's like, what do you want to eat? What do you actually want to eat? You know, if I make something and they're like, oh, I don't know, then, you know. So I get their ideas. I go, I like to, you know. Before I go grocery shopping, I always ask, what do they want? What do they need? Snacks? You know, what do they want for their lunch, dinner? They're very involved. Very cool. What about siblings? Yeah, my, I mean, she just tells me, I want this. I want this. This is a whole menu for her. So she'll <laughs> literally be like, can you make these I'm on page 67 yeah. today. <laughs> so. That's awesome. She definitely, um, yeah, she, she's always like, I want this. And she'll send me videos all day about food. Can you make me this? All right. Okay, ready? So we're ready to rock? Yeah. So we have, we're gonna caramelize some onions. We have butter. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil too. It feels weird for me not to be filming this. Okay, but and then I'm gonna have you I mean, come on, let's toss the onions in. Toss the onions in? Yep. Okay, just like this. Mm -hmm. This is what's actually going to take the longest, is caramelizing these onions. So if you want to make this for lunch, I definitely recommend doing the caramelized onions the night before. If you want oh, it, yeah. some kids don't like it. So. so 20, 25 minutes for this. And then we're going to work on our sliders. I'm going to have you keep an eye on that one. OK. So just toss and turn. Stir it yeah. a little bit. Okay. Okay, I'm very simple with my sliders, just salt and pepper. I think if you're good at cooking, you don't need too much seasoning to cover anything. I am not good at cooking. <laughs> uh, no, you don't I, cook that much? No, no. Get in there. If you, don't be scared. If you had my cooking, you would understand why I go out five nights a week. Okay. What do you like to cook if you do cook? Uh, barbecue. Barbecue? Smokers. Like grill like, type? Yeah, I used to, I have a smoker and that would be the no-brainer because oh, cool. I never mess it up. Yeah, you just throw it in, right? Yeah. And back when, before social media and my wife and I had different work hours, I would have to cook at home maybe 50% of the time and 100% of the time was terrible. I blame the recipe always because it wasn't me. <laughs> and, uh, but this is going to be super helpful. Yeah. Watching the pro do it. I have a lot of different level types of cooking, so there's a lot of easy recipes, so my kids can do it, your family can do it, but there's also a little bit more harder, more harder, is that a word? More difficult. Yeah. Um, recipes also for people who have been cooking, or you can learn as you go. So I'm just making them small to fit the Hawaiian rolls we have. What would you say, has there been one recipe that you would consider like the most difficult thing you've ever done? I don't think any recipe is that difficult besides obviously like French cuisine, because I, I can't even, I don't even know that. But um, I think it's just more the time it takes, time consuming, you know? So it's just more steps, more time equals more hard, I think, for me. But cookie's not hard once you get used to it and, right you know unless Gordon like Ramsay's anything. there just watching you do it I know right then geez I can't imagine <laughs> that was pretty crazy <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> no. I don't even do that I felt like no. it's scraping on my pan half the oh, time yeah, yeah. no go ahead no I don't want to try <laughs> no but every guy chef like they're always all about the flipping an egg yeah. is like oh man 
I'd be nervous. Can you do it? Yes. Yeah, of course. I try, yeah. I try, I try. Or an omelet. Oh, that's not good already. First ever cooking omelet up here, I think. This is the first time ever. Crazy. You were waiting for me. Yeah. <laughs> who, uh, who, who better than... So yeah, the challenge you did during Super Bowl weekend uh, in front of Caesar's Palace with Gordon Ramsay and two other chefs uh, was a super cool episode. Um, were there any kind of like interesting things for you behind the scenes? Um, it, just like before we went on, Gordon came on like to the back area and he just kind of met all of us and was like, it's so cool what you guys do. You know, he just kind of gave us the pep talk and was like, don't be nervous, you guys are great. You know, we have you here for a reason. Um, it was a very good, like, almost like a locker room coach type vibe. Okay. nice. You know, and it was just awesome to like, just talk to him beforehand and get to know him and meet him instead of just going right into him being like, oh, hey, we're doing this and, you know. But the TikTok dance you did with him, so how does that work? You just say, hey, do you want to do this? Well, their team was like, you can, you'll have time with Gordon, you know? So I was like, okay, well, what am I going to do? So I was trying to think of all kinds of stuff, but obviously I couldn't cook with him because, you know, we're at Caesar's Palace, we're outside. And then I also knew he probably didn't have that much time with me. Right. So I was like, I'm just going to think of all kinds of things, you know, like just doing something with my bento, something, you know. But then I also had like viral, like trendy TikToks on hand in case I like didn't have time to do more things. So he was busy shooting before and after the show, like a lot of the intro, outro, he was cooking another sandwich for another part of the show. And so I like, I waited around and I was like, I'm gonna, I literally am gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. I, and I brought him a gift for his newborn baby. So, that so I was touch. like, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna give him the gift and I'm literally, I have to make a TikTok, you know, I have to. So then I, and so then I told him, I was like, we're just going to do the dance, you know. And he, he basically was telling me the whole time, like, oh, I don't know how to dance. And, you know, you know, doing it. But it was perfect. It came out great. It was Thank so you. fun. It was fun. He was just awesome. And very good at what he does. Oh. Okay. And, okay, so these are looking good. Yep. I'm going to... Uh, for the beef broth. Oops, is it? Let me open it. Oh, I got I'll it. There. A little bit of beef broth to simmer, and then this is brown sugar. <laughs> I'm also gonna add a little bit of salt. And pepper. Yeah, we did have kosher salt in the pantry. Oh, I'm nice. Surprised. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. And they just need a simmer now. <laughs> You're doing fine. Come on, Phil. Look, HelloFresh, it says 40 minutes. It's like more like 80 for me. I don't know what happens. Yeah. HelloFresh is good, actually. Yeah. Super convenient. I made this cringy video once, and it was... Uh, the type of guys I liked, basically. Uh -huh. And it was just a uh, person who reads, makes their bed, and then um, it was cooking. But it was a funny, funny video. Right. Does your wife cook a lot, you said, or no? I mean, if we're at home, she likes to cook. Yeah. But rarely. I mean, honestly, she's probably cooking three times a month, maybe. Really? Yeah. Fine. So the key to this, you got to only flip it once, right? I try to just keep flip it once, okay. and then the other side I like to cheese up. You can go back and forth. And how do you feel about American slices versus? The I love cheddar? American cheese. So. Okay. Um, but I love all cheese. That's why when I tell you I love everything, I love everything. American cheese belongs on certain things. Cheddar cheese is good on certain things. No, you don't like American cheese? No, I mean, I do, but I think I still prefer this. Better cheese, I'm, yeah. Yeah. I think it's just more nostalgia for me totally. than anything else. Same. I, I eat a lot of American cheese slices. My one meal, that's like weird. Okay. 
but it's like my comfort meal. Sure. It's rice in water, and then I get American <laughs> cheese, and I just scoop my, like, pour, it's, it's kind of like porridge, but it's cold water. I like it cold. That didn't make the book? <laughs> no, definitely wait, not. Wait, wait, wait. So cooked rice. So cooked rice cooked with water. water. And then um, it's like cereal, you know? And then I put a slice of American cheese on top and eat that. Then you you also take, this is the kicker. <laughs> you think that's bad. And then you take raw spam. And that's my other panchan. So I just cut it up. A little Whoa. bit of Tabasco. Trust me though, like you have to try it one day. Little bit of Tabasco. Right. And then with the rice and water, and that's no, it. I'm gonna try it. My sister was making fun until she had it. It's so it good. is okay. You got the no, never. sister it's approval. Never been, never been shared. This is exclusive until podcast. <laughs> so cube up the spam just on the side, and then cheese. I just like to like make different shapes, like by myself, yeah. and then <laughs> put it on top. Just eat that. Okay, next podcast, we'll have a bowl. I'll bring it. <laughs> And if you want to level it up, you use poricha, the barley yeah, the curry. Barley yeah. The water. That's okay. A little flavor there. It's good. I like to have green onion kimchi on the side if I can, but. But times are tough, you know? Yeah, if you don't have it. <laughs> Clearly, I mean, yeah. But I could, yeah, I could live off that. If I was in a zombie apocalypse, rice, water, and spam. All right, so we got King's Hawaiian rolls, the only one to go with. Yep. Right? How many do we have? Two, four, six, eight. I wish I could take any assistance in doing this, but yeah. Uh, you're fine. Sorry, I'm not letting you <laughs> it's help okay. me either. Thank you for not letting me. Just cutting it in half. Both, si both sides or yes, just one? Yes, please. Now? Okay. Evenly, so every bite is equally as yummy. This is a lot of fucking pressure. <laughs> Jesus. Is this a fucking disaster? No, it's fine. Oh. You just <laughs> no, it's it. not. <laughs> That's fine. Just use fine. You should see when I, I cook in the front. I, I always in the back like, like, what is he doing? What is he screwing up over here? Uh, Ta -da. Beautiful. Awesome. On this page as well, there's the hot Cheeto mozzarella sticks. Is that the normal go-to combo that... That's just what my kids love. Okay. Um, any time of the day, actually. They'll eat that all day, every day. But yeah, I just kind of put them together on what we like. Mm -hmm. But like you said, you know, we can you can mix and match. Do what your kids like, what your family likes, what you like. You can just do one portion of the lunch. You don't have to make everything. It's a lot, you know, like making this and then mozzarella sticks, that's a lot. but. I put that there because if you want to have that for dinner or lunch, you know, and have extra, you can meal prep it and just have it for the rest of the week. Very I forgot cool. the onions. Okay. Looks phenomenal. All right. There we go. Got these. Oh, what? Too cute. All right. Hey, let's try it. Cheers. Thank you for doing this. Good? It's great. <laughs> the caramelized onions really take it to the next level, and I love how many there are. Mm -hmm. Let's make some lunch. Uh, it will be available on July 30th. You can pre order it at all the outlets now Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Walmart, Target, all that stuff. Jessica, thanks so much. Thank you. For being thank here. you for having me. And uh, yeah, super excited for your success. Yay, thank and, you. And uh, can't wait to see what happens next. Thank you. Yep. See you next time. Bye.